We have done Bronco and Wrangler time and time again, but there's always been one thing missing from the equation. The affordability, because typically we're dealing with a $50,000, $60,000 Bronco, but not today, because Andre has brought along something really special. Yes, thanks to my friend Destin, we have this, the base for the Bronco versus your almost base uh, Jeep Wrangler. That's right, so it's going to be $33,000 Jeep versus $36,000 Bronco, and at the end of this video, we're going to bring in a Ringer, another $33,000 purpose-built off-roader, and we'll see how it compares to the other two. So, Andre, let's talk about the two models. Actually, this is about 35,000. Now, Tommy, I was not lying. Look at the price, 35,770. And the only option really is the front bumper, the modular bumper on this um, automatic Ford Bronco. Absolutely. Now, this Jeep, as you see it equipped, like I said, about 33,000. And I know it's not quite apples to oranges because we got two-door Wrangler versus the four-door Bronco, but we couldn't pass up this opportunity to do this video. So we're just gonna run it as it is. We're gonna run the Bronco and the Jeep up a number of challenging obstacles, starting with trenches. And this is a brand new obstacle here in Andre's pit. This is going to test articulation and the four wheel drive system because we're gonna start lifting up wheels. We're gonna see how the vehicles articulate and then if they can get unstuck. Justin, my friend. Hello, Andre. <laughs> Good to see you again. You too. So we did a video about your brand new Bronco, mm -hmm. what, a couple, a couple weeks ago? That seems about right. And everybody said, hey guys, why are you standing in a dirt on a dirt road? Why don't you off-road? I did read those comments <laughs> and I was and honestly I've been looking forward to this because that's as far as it's been on a one dirt road. And, 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 and me too. So first of all I want to thank you first of all for coming out. Uh, this Bronco is brand new, it has 350 miles on it. And we're already putting it into Andre's pit. That's right. Um, that's so nice. if you haven't watched TFL uh, Andre's pit. Oh, you have turn assist on. Yes. So it'll make it easier to whip. Yeah. It should be able to whip right around right here. Dude, that's sweet. Works pretty good. And keep going. I'll tell you what, straight now. Keep going. Straight now. Okay, nice and slow. Welcome to Andre's pit, by the way. <laughs> Yes, it is. And it, it has nothing to do with my pits. It's actually this ravine at Tumbleweed Ranch, our property here at TFL. And trenches is the first obstacle uh, within this. We really built this up for like crossovers. Ooh, traction control. Did you feel that? I did. And this does not have the lockers. No, it's a base Bronco. It's the base, so we're just going to see how it A little bit of traction control, right? Yep, we'll see how it does. I'm very curious. I've had lots of Jeeps, but... But now start, but now you're in the Bronx. Right. Like I said in the previous video, start with a clean slate and improve from there. Yeah, because you have some big plans for this. You know, you want to put bigger tires, maybe other accessories on this. I'd like to, yes. That's, that's the plan, but I think that went pretty well on street tires. So far, so good. This Bronco, new for 2021, is a huge deal in the off-road world. I'm sure you know that, unless you've been living underneath a BFG for your entire life. But this Ford is a really fantastic looking vehicle to throw back to the original Bronco from the mid 1960s. And they've done it absolutely correctly with the Bronco font across the front. Uh, these throwback headlights with standard LEDs, by the way, which are much better than what Jeep offers. You got these cool little tie down points. You got the phenomenal eruption green color, but this one's kind of cool because it's a base trim. And what that means is you get um, steel wheels and every vehicle looks better with steel wheels including the Bronco. Now this one doesn't have uh, an aggressive tire on it. If you wanted a really aggressive tire, you'd have to step up to like a black diamond, or of course you can go for the crazy Sasquatch package. But as a base unit, I think Ford has done a really good job and it also looks phenomenal. This one is the soft top, of course. You've got the mirrors that stay on the body versus the Jeep. When you pull out the doors, you gotta uh, come up with a mirror solution, but really design is just preference. So David, you are the mastermind behind Andre's pit and the off-road course and it really came along nice, huh? Well, it's still a work in progress. I think we have to run a variety of vehicles through it to know if we need to make some obstacles a little more difficult. Yeah. And I think one of them that I need to work on is the logs. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make it a little more difficult, but just this week I put two new ones down here in Andre's pit. Yes. 
So we'll call it the trenches. The trenches. Yeah, we're going to have to get a sign for the trenches. I like that. Yeah, and this is a really good test because hopefully we'll be able to see the difference between the Ford and the uh, Jeep in terms of suspension articulation, right? Correct. Yep. Now, what we're going to do is simply go into four-wheel drive low, okay. just like Andre had it in. Now, we do not have any locking diffs, right? No. But we do have a limited slip rear diff. And then um, Jeep does use something called BLD, brake lock differential. Oh, it does. So it's going to so, use a computer just like the Ford. Like the Ford. But the Ford didn't have a limited slip. No, it doesn't have a limited so slip. So all it has is the brake. And, right. and that's both front and back, right? Yes, and that's yeah. the same on the Jeep. But the oh, Jeep has a clutch-based limited slip as well in it. Okay. So this should have a slight advantage over the Ford. Yep. Uh, the disadvantage is I have a manual transmission, which is going to make it a little trickier to be perfectly smooth. So now on my trenches here... The object is to get two wheels off the ground. Yep, and let's see if we have enough articulation to keep them on the ground. Oh no, we are in the air. But that was pretty seamless. It, it was. It did, it did it well. And it's, it's hard to tell when you're inside when your tires are actually off the ground. Because mm -hmm. it does, a, I mean, you can feel it slip right there, but you don't know when when the one when both are elevated. Well, and the solid axles, I think, are probably doing a slightly better job yeah. of keeping us... Now that was my fault. You killed it. You killed it, Tommy. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, the Jeep is doing a slightly better job. I killed it. But yeah, um, it seems to be doing a pretty good job of like keeping keeping composure. You yeah. Know? Yep. And just like that, we are out of the trenches. Now, do you think Jeep did a good enough job on first gear, getting it low enough? No, to absolutely crawl? not. No. No, that is a big problem with this Jeep. So we only have like a 3.45 axle ratio. I would love to be able to get like a Willys with the 410 right. from the yep. Groovecon. And that would make your crawler gear better. Yeah, it's just way too tall. Yeah, because um, I was watching you right there, Tommy, and you were you were on the clutch a little bit. Right. Yeah, and so it'd be nice to be off the clutch completely. Completely, yeah. yeah. Now my Jeep here is what they call a Wrangler Willy, so it's not quite the very base model, but it's pretty darn close because this is not just any Willys, this is a Willys Sport. So yes, you get the cool tires and the cool stickers, but at the heart, it's just a base model Sport with roll-up windows, manual mirrors, the little itty bitty tiny radio. So it's pretty close to base for this comparison. And from a design standpoint, the two are really very different. The Jeep has an insanely different body profile. So the actual body portion of the Jeep is really narrow, and a lot of the width is taken up by these black plastic fenders. Now the Jeep design, it's evolved over the last 79 years, but it hasn't changed all that much. A Wrangler from 2002 is gonna look pretty much the same as a Wrangler from 2022. This is whole, so we've got slightly deeper but less long pits, and this is going to be a great test of not only the four-wheel drive system, but how the suspension um, feels and rides, because they're really gonna get rocked around in there. And we also have different modes, right? Yes, we have different modes. Tommy is uh, directing me. Now there is a program called Forescan, which I can add the rock mode to it, but that'll be another add-on later. So I just went to send mode, so hopefully, hopefully it will also appropriate the traction in the right place. Now, I think it did quite well, actually. This was a little bit easier than the trenches. The trenches are a little bit tough. Now holes is kind of trenches, but for like crossovers and SUVs. Yep. But it is a good test of ride quality, and I think this is where the Jeep is probably gonna be not quite as serene as the Ford. <laughs> well, that's the difference between automatic and standard transmission too. Well, I also mean like just the the solid axles, right? We're probably gonna get a little bit more head toss. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's well, not bad. Not too bad. No, not at all. It was okay. Oh, that was great. Yeah, I'll take that. All right. You feel very much in control on that one. I mean, it didn't feel like you were slipping. No, no, no. That was that yeah. was perfectly easy. Yeah. Next up, we've got logs, and logs is a great test of traction on the wood, but also ground clearance and, of course, ride quality. Let's see if we see a difference between the Ford and the Jeep. Yeah, this is a good break-in test just to see how it does, because I've always had Jeeps, so. And this is kind of your new thing. I mean, you've had a couple of Fords too, right? Oh yes, I got a Mustang and I grew up with a Bronco too, but yeah. there's no technology in that Bronco too. <laughs> that thing is, that was really old school, so. So now we're going to be hopping. Are you ready to hop? Hop and skip, hop and skip. So of course, the, 
the difference between this and like a new Bronco with a Sasquatch package, right? Like we were saying, the Sasquatch package will have front and rear lockers, big 35s, right? Sway bar disconnect. Sway bar disconnect. Different gearing. There, there, there's. Yeah. There's, there's a so lot. many option packages within an option package, so to speak. Yeah. And this, okay, we're just dropping over. Yeah, I think we're doing pretty. Our clearances have been good so far. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy with that for just 30 inch tires. Dude, what? no touching? No spin, no touch. No, no touch? Open. That was easy. No hesitation? No. The pouch versus are way different. Under the hood of the Bronco for the space model is a four cylinder turbocharged 2.3 engine and a 10 speed automatic transmission. It's almost the same engine as in a new Ford Ranger. About 275 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque if you don't use premium fuel. If you do use premium, the power goes up, but I love this powertrain. All right, so Tommy, I'd like for you to try something here. Okay. I want you to, to go first gear. Yep. No clutch. Yep. And a little more gas. Okay. I just want to see how we do Okay. Taking this a little faster All than right. we've been doing it. All right, let's see okay. how it is. Oh yeah, this is a great idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep, that's pretty... Exactly. That's pretty rough. Pretty gnarly, but it tells us a lot. It does, <laughs> yeah. It does. I mean, it, ha it handles it. Yeah, and we didn't run out of clearance, so we didn't, nope. we didn't run out. But what we did get is a lot of like this. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Right. Um, that, that was good, and uh, there was no issues with uh, running out of anything there, really. Now, I do think I'm going to add a few more logs to the logs part. And you said you want to oil them, is that correct? I did. I brought a whole bunch of oily deck uh, preservative. I'm going to spray them down real thick. Okay. And see if we can't get some wheel slip. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So it's going <laughs> to be more the, of a traction test. Right, yeah. I think that's a really and, good and idea. And preserve them at the same time, right? right. Yeah, because they do get torn up after enough car going up yeah. and if you add more at the top too it's gonna be that's well, the steepest part yeah that's the steepest part so I think that'll be a good test right there so of course a Jeep hood you open it from the outside and this has the base engine with the base transmission it's the Pentastar V6 it's been around for 10 years 10 in the Wrangler so it's got 285 horsepower 260 pound-feet of torque yeah it's a little bit of a corporate V6 but it goes a long time with few reliability issues according to most folks I talked to um, and it does look a little cleaner underneath this hood but if you want a turbocharged four-cylinder you can get it within a Jeep if you want a plug-in hybrid you can get it in the Jeep if you want a diesel you can get it in the Jeep if you want a V8 you can get it in the Jeep so you got a lot of options in the in the Jeep whereas the Ford only has a V6 and a four-cylinder turbo and here we have Rocks Boulevard. So this is a test of ground clearance, approach angle, departure angle, but also power, precision, and control of the transfer case and the drive line. Now we have a truth section and a dare section. We're just gonna send both of them up the harder side. All right, so now we're gonna try Rocks. Okay, sorry, okay. I'm nervous, you're nervous. Um, your wife is also, you know, I, I know her and she's gonna be angry at me if something happens. And you're gonna be angry at me, and um, there's gonna be a lot of nasty things if I damage it. Tommy, talk to me a little. You are looking fine. He said I'm looking fine. Excellent. <laughs> okay. I don't have a front camera either. We have a rear camera. It's all those days that I go four wheel in reverse. It'll come very handy. Well, but I mean, <laughs> you, you grew up in Colorado. You were born here, yes. right? Yes. Well, pretty much. I, mean, I lived my entire life here. Um, I think we touched the rear control arm. That probably is what it was. You know, that mm -hmm. that's kind of hangs in front of the rear tire. That's not terrible by any means. I mean, I grew up in the mountains with two-wheel drive, no lockers, bald tires, doing trails. And... Well, back then there were no cameras. Right, and I, <laughs> yes, and I had bigger, you know what, then yes. than I do now. But now we have responsibilities and families, right? Yes, and, and my, my four-wheel drive truck wasn't a $400 garage sale piece. Yes. <laughs> One of the impressive things about the interior on this base Bronco is actually how many 
additional features it offers. Yes, the steering wheel may be a little bit plasticky, but all of the windows are powered. I've got powered side mirrors, so it just feels nice already. Of course, my 10-speed uh, shifter is right here. My mode select and four-wheel drive system, including trail control, crawl control system is down here. And then it has also a decently sized screen. Uh, of course, many different options, uh, although manual climate control system, but you know, that's just great. And a big digital cluster here in the center uh, with a speedometer and handles. And of course, the, uh, the roof uh, is a soft top that you know folds back pretty easily and pretty comfy seats and also you know the position the seating position is nice and comfy kind of like a pickup truck would be now rocks boulevard is fun because we have a truth and a dare side and the dare side is a good test of ground clearance and i noticed on that ford they just ever so slightly um uh, kind of scraped the bottom so we'll, let's see what the jeep does here and this is where it's nice having these standard mud terrain tires too you're not worried about yep. like sidewalls and I did try when I was picking out rocks. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get the biggest rocks that I that I could out of my rock pile. Okay. So that we wouldn't have a, a roll, right? Yep. So I feel pretty confident about what I did here. This is telling me a lot too. Yeah, that was yeah. nothing. No, nothing. That was really impressive. Yeah. yeah. So um, lots of that's really where the Wrangler shines. Yeah. Right. Kind of slow speed over yeah. big rocks. Lots of skid plates lots of articulation and it turned out to be absolute breeze from an interior standpoint the two are well there's a lot of differences so the jeep is very basic we've got a plastic steering wheel we've got basic chunky climate control knobs we have traditional gauges for both the tack and the speedometer it's very much old school but i do like the way this thing is assembled all the knobs are very tactile all the panels seem to fit very well but from a tech standpoint the jeep is way behind the ford even if you compare base to base now, this jeep has roll down windows it has no power mirrors it's got i mean it's very 70s chic in here in terms of tech, but I kind of like that because it's basic. Um, screen is just a five inch display on this model. No Apple CarPlay, nothing like that. It does have Bluetooth though, which is okay. And then it does have a very good sound system. So Jeep does do a good sound system, even on the stock um, Wranglers. One area where the Jeep is way behind the Ford are the seats. So these are the heritage tan seats, but they're just not, not nearly enough adjustability, not nearly enough backwards motion on the driver's side. So it's a little bit cramped for taller drivers. And you're probably thinking, Tommy, you couldn't bother to wash your Jeep before you did this video. This thing was sparkly clean. And then David was like, let me show you this cool new obstacle in our offered course and I got this thing more stuck before this uh, filming shoot than I've ever done so I, I had to frantically squirt it off and I do apologize but we got that video as well and that thing is uh, worth watching sorry Tommy I didn't mean to get you stuck in the mud give it one more try here we go nothing David here's the problem Tommy David, but it's just not climbing. Do we need a shovel? So, so now you're digging. So I'm digging because obviously I'm the one that got him into this mess. Tommy went and got the FJ out of the garage to see if we could uh, use that maybe to pull the Jeep backwards. So obviously my entrance point is going to have to be the exit point because... David, I'm going to try turning it around. So we got the FJ up here, barely. Okay. <laughs> Um, I say we just go for another pole. With the mule? No, with the FJ. With, okay. Okay, so that didn't work. We need a small tug. We've got mounds and this is a test of ground clearance and breakover angle. We've got these big manufactured hills and let's see if the Bronco gets stuck trying to crest them. Okay, now, now Tommy wants me to go over these mounds. I'm not sure. Tommy, I, I don't know if we have enough like angles for this. Let's see. I will let you know. Yeah, just... Take it nice and slow. Oh, You're good. I'll tell you what it's You're not. sweating, Andre. <laughs> and keep going. You're good. Keep going. And keep going. Yeah, you're on your belly now. Um, yeah, you're out of ground clearance, my dude. So, 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 
yet, but you are completely maxed out, so it's up to you. Well, Tommy, this is not fair. You, your Jeep is a two-door short wheelbase. We're in a four-door base, you know, ground clearance. So I, I, I'm going to reverse, I think. Andre says it's not fair. Do you hear this guy over here? It isn't fair, Andre, but sometimes life is not fair. Especially when you don't control where the vehicles come from. <laughs> How about this? How about this? Destin, would you like to um, approach this obstacle yourself? Yeah, you bet. Destin's going to do it. Well, I just put those in there yesterday, so it's not compacted dirt, and it's just dirt. So, if it's got a skid plate, it should be fine. What? You're making it easier on me, Andre. Steven, this is not a crossover course. What are you doing? Well, one good thing about it, I just put it in there yesterday, and it's only dirt. So, you might do a little plowing, but... Sees the but I've just dissolved myself of responsibilities, there you go. okay? I think that was smart, Andre. <laughs> okay. All right, Dustin. Now, so, so now, let's see how I would approach this if we were up in the hills. That's so my recommendation is to think about 40 miles an hour and just clear both of them. No. Don't so a little bit more toward the driver's side and it would just pull off. There you go. Thanks. Yep. Nice. Yep. Hey. Piece of cheese. Okay. <laughs> Don't go on the poop. Oh, this yeah. This is poop. a poop pile. Right, well. Uh, because he did well. Uh, if you do well on Andre's pit, do not go in the poop pile. Well, that might have been cheating a little bit, but he did a great job of clearing the dirt. <laughs> I'm going with that with cheating a little bit. He kind of kind of scooted off on the sideline here, but it's his Bronco. I'm not going to ask him to do something he's not comfortable with. But luckily with my Jeep, I don't care, so I'm just going to go. <laughs> and if it scrapes, it scrapes. This is going to be a good test of break over. I like these mounds, by the way. These came out good. Yeah, it was the dirt that I took out of the trenches, and I just piled them up here. All right, let's see. And I didn't know if they were far enough apart or anything. No, like I said, good. this is all a test, right? Oh, this, yeah, a little scrape there. Yeah, we scraped a little bit. But not too bad. It wasn't a lot of pressure. Yeah. Let's see what the next one and is. Then we hit hit our tail. Is that what that was? Then we hit our bottom again. Yeah, we're on the bottom a little bit. We're high centered slightly. Wow, it's fine. Let's see if we We did all right. Pretty good. Now we're going up the poop path, which is probably the least attractive part of the uh, tumbleweed off. Well, we're course. waiting for the rain. Oh, is that what we're waiting yeah. for? We want to make a diarrhea path. Huh? <laughs> yeah. That's the goal. <laughs> now the Jeep, of course, does have removable doors, but the very traditional in the window design, you got the full framed um, door, where if you look at the Bronco, you got the frameless windows. And this is nice. The doors are very easy to take off on the Ford. But one thing which is worse on the Ford compared to the Jeep, the soft top. Now look at this rear quarter window. The Jeep is nice and flat and perfectly even. The soft top on the Bronco has this ripple in it. I call it the Bronco wave, and that's because of the bonding procedure that they use on the uh, Wabasto soft top for the Ford versus the best top on the Jeep. Uh, so something a little bit interesting there. But Tommy, wait, I want to show you something. Um, if you hold the open button on the key on the Bronco. Yeah, it unlocks it. No. <laughs> See, this is the issue. This is the issue with modern tech, Andre. Look at this. I can open my window at any time, regardless of the status of the vehicle. <laughs> it's supposed to roll down all the windows. All right, next up is Volcano, and this is the ultimate test of approach and departure angle. So we're gonna send the Bronco over very, very slowly, and we'll see if we scrape the front or the rear end. All right, Dustin, go ahead and just go straight forward. And straight the wheel down completely straight, yep, nice and slow. Yeah, we're doing nice and slow and nice and slow. Yeah, you got another four inches. And all right, now we're going to watch the back. Stop here, stop here. Ooh, stop. Yes. Let me actually move this camera because we're going to kill it. That's going to squish the camera in the back of it. So we put a GoPro underneath the bumper. All right, just creep ever so slowly. I'm not sure. Keep going. Keep she's, going. she's putting you on the harder line, and, dude. Keep going just a little bit more. Oh, that was so close. I think you put you on a harder line. I mean, the easier line would have been to go left. Mm -hmm. That had a more down in a straight up yeah. angle. Yeah, yeah, 
Well, there you have it. Piece of cake. And you can cheat on this one slightly. Yeah, it depends on which angle you take. Right. And if you cheat badly like I did in the Cadillac Escalade, you'll rip off the rear bumper. So, so don't cheat. We're not going to do one. that. Oh, we're okay. not cheating, David. All we're right. taking it head on. Yep. Um, but I'm going to remove that rear camera because. But actually, head on is easier than at an angle. Yeah, it might be. But I, so I right? think those are his tire tracks, right? You can kind of see him in the. Yeah, I can see where the Bronco went. Yeah, so we're going to just try to do that. You want to just do his? Okay. Yeah. All right. For comparison, let me make. But to make, me, that's the easiest way because you're keeping both wheels in the same plane. Yeah, but on like a typical SUV, you run out of the, the nose. Yeah, that's good. true. Yeah. Camera's long gone. Okay. <laughs> I wonder where that guy went off to. All right, ready? Mm, probably in the holes. I bet we lost it on the logs. You bet on the logs? We'll yeah. have to check. All right, here we go. Okay. Doesn't feel like we're scraping the front. No. I think his his track is wider, because you see, like if I line up my wheels here, we are uh -huh. pretty far off yeah. on this side. So what's a Bronco, 72, Oops. 76? What's the width? Um, yeah, it's about 76. 76. And this is a little bit narrower. Just a little bit. Depends on your tires. Depends on your tires. Yeah, yeah. those street tires were narrower. Probably Very narrow. probably makes like a two inch difference, is yeah. what I'm guessing. Yeah, but we accomplished that just fine. So yeah. I think overall the Jeep and the Bronco, at least on this preliminary test, were really good. Now I'd love to take him into something much, much harder. Um Destin has like three hundred miles on that Ford. Yeah. So he's a little bit concerned about that. He um, was willing, but we well, talked him out of it. We talked him out of it because he saw how brutally stuck I got <laughs> trying to get up this hill earlier. And how we got coated in mud from tail to top. <laughs> thick, thick mud. This is supposed to be Ford versus Jeep. Why is a Toyota here? Well, that's a great question, Andre. I wanted to bring in another vehicle because this is a, a, an FJ Cruiser from 2014. We paid $33,500 for it. So similar price to the other two. And I wanted to see, can a nine-year-old Toyota go the same places that two brand new rigs can go for a similar price? Well, now it's priceless. I mean, the prices keep going up. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. It's an appreciating asset, unlike perhaps the other two, but let's go ahead and run the Toyota through the same tests. So, Tommy, first impressions? Yeah. I mean, I, I like FJs, okay? I had a Land Cruiser, I, I had an 85. There's some, there's, there's some kind of negativity gonna yeah, come, so, come I mean, out next. But but the, the seats aren't as comfortable as your Jeep. You know, these seats are less comfortable than the Jeep? That's the Jeep my, is like sitting on a park bench, David. Well, that's just my first, we just got out of the Jeep and I just got in the FJ. Oh, I think these seats are kind of interesting. They're very neoprene-y. They, like, yeah. they feel like you're sitting on a sponge. Huh. Um, in my opinion, but I, I, I understand, I respect your, your analysis. Yeah. Now, the, the, my first impression is it's kind of like stepping into a, um, a, a, a pill box, you okay. know? Like it's very bunker-like in here. Um, just small windows. Well, the d design features are certainly different than other SUVs, right? Even <laughs> even the old FJ60s and oh, yeah. 62s and 80s, it, the windows are much smaller. What is fun about FJ, though, is that we had a two-door Jeep a four-door Bronco and like a two-and-a-half-door Toyota because you got these little <laughs> clamshell doors, right? Yeah. So right. this was $33,000, which is a lot of money, but yeah. FJ Cruisers are just worth so much yeah. right now. Right. And um, we have more tech. So this vehicle, believe it or not, even though it's some nine years older, does have a locking rear diff, oh. um, but we're not going to use it. I want to show you a cool feature. Okay. So Toyota uses something called A Track, Advanced Traction okay. Control. I've heard of it. Yeah, but nobody really knows what it does. It sounds like Eight Track when you say eight it. Eight Track. No, but it's Eight Track. <laughs> you, don't have, you don't have an Eight Track player in here. No, unfortunately okay. not. But what I like about A Track is it's kind of like the brake lock differential system on the other two. Oh sure. Except I think it's much snappier and more is aggressive. It? Okay. So we'll see how that works here. So I've got rear locker off, A Track on. Mm -hmm. And so it's basic computer telling the brakes to come on. Yes, when but it feels slip. Yeah, but it's very, it's very aggressive. It's a computer on steroids. So we're gonna probably lift up a tire here, independent front suspension. Well, you would think. Yep. Can you hear it's that a noisy thing? There's a lot going yeah. on there, <laughs> but it works like it's very effective. Sure. So yeah. we're gonna do the same thing here, and it's gonna sound like sneakers in the dryer. <laughs> right. Yep. But it really clamps down hard on those on those brakes. 
It sounds like the Millennium Falcon starting to come apart. Right. Okay, come on, figure it out. So maybe <laughs> not quite as good as what we did in the Jeep, but it, I mean, it's very aggressive. There's no, yeah. there's no doubt there, right? Well, it works. It works. But the sound is a little dis, it's a little off-putting. Yeah, off-putting. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so we made it through that and we okay. did lift a couple tires here and there, right? Yep. Now the cool thing about the FJ is it's basically a new 400. Yeah, um, <laughs> right. Yeah, same suspension, same motor. Same basic architecture, yep. yeah. Shorter, it's got a shorter wheelbase. Um, and there's some, there are some important changes, but for the most part, it's very similar. Yeah. So we're gonna kind of skip a couple of these because we're starting to run out of time, but it will go through holes, it'll go through logs. I yeah. want to try rocks though. Now, if you can get over kind of the poor visibility, the proportions on this are very manageable, mm -hmm. and it is easy to kind of navigate around tighter turns. Well, the, the nice thing about the FJ, it has a very short front end. Very short. So, so even yeah. though the hood is a little taller, it's not way out there. So right now, we can't see anything. No. We, we're, we're going by faith, right? right? We right. don't know where we're at. Yeah, we're, we're looking into the sky. Completely lost at this point. <laughs> but, to the right. So it's a good thing we have a spotter. Yeah, because I almost ran over a telling camera. Telling us what to do. But it does it does seem a little obtrusive, the, the hood. The hood is, yeah, you can't see out of FJ Cruisers. It's just kind of... It's a good thing it's short. It's a good thing it's short. <laughs> yeah. All right, now let's go ahead and try mounds next. Okay. And um, we'll see what the breakover angle's like. Ready for mounds? Yep. Right, let's see if we can scrape the butt on mounds. still will. How about the attitude, David? What's, right. what's the wheelbase? Oh, yeah. there's that. A wheelbase is longer than the Jeep, but shorter than the Ford. Okay. I don't want to mis misquote it. Ooh, do you... Okay, ready? What's the butt going to do? A little bit. That was the camera if that oh, just that got was. taken out. Oh, we just took the camera off again. Uh, I would say that's pretty similar to the Ford oh, and the yeah. Jeep, yeah. I mean, we made it over, but we, we did yeah. touch. So, okay, now that we've kind of experienced some of these, right? You've talked yep. to Destin, you've experienced these vehicles. Which, yep. which, which are the ones that's talking to you the most? Oh, they, they all have features that I really like. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think if I were to take, pick a motor, yep. an uh, engine, yep. I'd pick this one. Toyota four, engine. The four liter. Yep. Uh, even though it's not necessarily, it's very economical. <laughs> no. I'm just, I'm just not really sold on the twin turbo or any turbo on a on a off -road gasoline, vehicle on yep. an off-road vehicle i like it naturally aspirated i don't mind giving up a few miles per gallon okay for it um well should we see what the ride quality is like before yeah, we decide okay, let's go for All it right. tommy we'll, we'll, we'll take it about okay. the same speed as the jump this is where this vehicle is going to shine i think hey, although yours did good pretty good actually yeah. I could get a little head bob in there, but... That's probably uh, better than the Jeep, though. Yeah, probably a little bit better. Okay, so we're good ride. So you take the engine out of the Toyota. You yep. like the Toyota engine the best? I take the straight axle out of your Jeep. Okay. Okay. Yep. I mean, I like independent front suspension for, for certain things, but not for off-road. And I would take the Ford looks. Uh, Ford does look good. Yeah. yeah. It's the best looking of the three. Now, in my, in my opinion, sorry, I, folks. But my I, opinion, I agree. It's a good it's looking the best vehicle. looking of the three. Now, unfortunately, we can't do that. So, if you had to pick one, you've got oh, thirty-four thousand dollars. I choose. can't just combine all the no. features of the th ones. No, because that would be one hundred twenty thousand. Then you have to buy all three uh, of them. Shoot. <sighs> all right, we're going through volcano here. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, no trouble. Yeah, there. really good angles in no Toyota as well. All right, so what what are you leaning towards? I, you know, <laughs> I'd have to go with your Jeep. Still going Wrangler, yeah, huh? Yeah, I'd go with your Wrangler. And here's the reason why. Um, the Bronco's new yet, mm -hmm. and every new vehicle's got issues that you have to work through. It's like Very the, true. Like the top, like the, the windows, like, I mean, the reliability of the motor I mean it may be a great motor you just don't know until it's been around for a while yeah right it's unproven still it's, for the most yeah, part yeah yeah so I would take you know what's proven I mean the, the FJ is probably you know most proven. the most proven yeah uh, the suspension's been around for a long time but it is pretty compromised I, I, I'll give you that I just like the Jeep stance the Jeep um, ability the little bit that I've been in your Jeep, I like it. So 
Andre, which one of the three would you buy for about $35,000? Okay, it's very easy for me, Tommy, this time. Yeah. Usually it's not. But I'm, I'm gonna take the most green one. Okay. Uh, of these three. Because four doors, yep. really easy to get to. I'm not talking about those suicide doors on the FJ Cruiser. And just really solid performance, even with those basic tires. Interesting. Now, I bought the Wrangler, yeah. so my choice naturally is a Toyota. <laughs> I do! I love that FJ Cruiser because the thing about FJs is this one has 60,000 miles, yeah. and you know it'll still be around at 360,000 miles. That 4 liter is indestructible. It's got kind of a funky back seat setup. It's a lot more practical than the Jeep in a lot of ways, and it tows the most here. 5,000 pounds. Yeah, but you cannot see out of the back of it. You don't need, well, well the, why are you looking out the back? You're, you're winning the race. You go forward. Well, there you have it, guys. Of course, <laughs> of course remember, alltfl.com is where you can find all of our automotive reviews in one place. Absolutely, and we'll see you in the next TFL Off-Road video. A big thank you to Destin for bringing in his Ford, and thank you for watching.